Cinnamon Cooney, I'm your Art Sherpa, and I'm going to show you in about one hour how to do this fabulous acrylic painting, tree painting with a twist. So grab your paints, grab your brushes and your canvas, and I want you to come back and meet me at this easel right now. Let's go. to paint. Today is a really big day. It's a tree day. And today we're going to do tree painting with a twist. This is a journey. We're going to take it together. I'm your Art Sherpa and I'm going to get you through this the same way we go up a trail, just one step at a time. Now you're going to make some discoveries with me. You're going to discover that while you have been telling everybody you know that everyone else has art talent but you, that you actually have a lot of opinions and feelings internally on trees because we all have a long story, a personal story wrapped around trees. Our relationship to trees is sacred, it's emotional, it's about our childhood, it's about our favorite memories. So when you go to paint this, I want you to really work taking a deep breath just do the process, just relax and follow the instructions. I want you to push the panic and anxiety away. There is inside you a picture of a perfect, glorious, divine tree. And you might find it a little frustrating as we're going that it's not immediately coming out for you. But I just want you to have a little faith in yourself, a little faith in me, and hang in with me. And we're going to get that tree up on the canvas. Now this gorgeous tree has like a stained glass effect and we have some very specific colors for that. I have my phthalo blue, I have my cad yellow, I have my doxine purple, my titanium white, and then I have two very special colors. I have southern ocean blue, also known as phthalo turquoise. This is Matisse structure. And I have Australian sienna. Okay, which, and these are both, this is a series two, this is a series three in color, and that'll be sometimes when a color is more expensive, they'll do levels and series on you too, so you get to deal with, is it a tier one paint, a tier two paint, and then is it series one, series three, and the difference between that is that levels of paint is the quality of the products in the paint, and then series within a paint brand is about the expense of the materials. Like certain colors are just more difficult to acquire and mine and manufacture for paint. So definitely going to need Southern Ocean Blue and definitely going to need the Australian Sienna. You can get those online or at uh, Jerry's Artorama. They're really reasonably priced and I wholly recommend them. I love them in my kit and I wouldn't bother you with them unless they're important. Then I've also got my black, my Mars Black by Liquitex and I'm ready to go. I have an assortment of brushes and we'll talk about them as we go and I'll list them underneath. Now listen, if you love these, if you're doing them with me, be sure and click and subscribe. Be sure and come and follow. Go to our Pinterest page and see what people are doing online. I post these when you guys share them with me and you can see what other people's journeys are like. The first thing that I'm going to do today is I'm going to break up my canvas space so that I can uh, paint it in and I'm going to take my my Southern Ocean Blue and mix it into my Australian Sienna and it's going to give me a very deep green. I'm going to come up oh, about four inches. You can measure these out if it's important to you. About four inches from the side here and make a little mark. And then I'm going to have about two inches on the right. And then I'm going to just make a nice rolling hill. It even helps to say it like that, rolling hill. Okay, just a nice little roll. And then I'm going to come from about the same height on the other side and then just make another rolling hill. Do not get mental at this stage. This is just a placement about where your paint is ending. 
and I want you to rinse out your brush very, very, very well. We're going to be working on blending and blending and soft effects. I'm using my paper towel here. Ooh, let me get some of my libation. You see this? Mmm. This is bucha kombucha, which is, uh, you know, if you're a fruity artist health nut, you love kombucha tea. And I love my kombucha. Meet Elmer, my new mug. Mmm. Yeah, stay hydrated. Stay well in your studio. Got my paper towel. I'll put him over here. So I'm using my paper towel to dry off my brushes. I'm going to get my brush really rinsed out. And I'm going to take a little yellow over to my white. And I'm going to mix a very soft color. Now here's the trick to this. A little yellow. Takes very little yellow to affect your white. And I'm going to come here. I don't want to get any of my green in my yellow. And I'm going to, I'm going to paint around my side so I have options whether or not I want to frame. Alright. Now you are just painting along with me, you're relaxed. It's easy. We're having a good time. We're taking time for ourselves. I'm taking time for myself today. When I when I do these tutorials for you, when I do these tutorials for you, I'm taking time for myself too. We're doing this together. We're making time. So you see this here? I'm coming up three inches. I'm gonna give it about three inches, three and a half inches, and I've got this very soft, soft duck yellow. And then I'm gonna have a little bit of fun. I'm gonna come over to my Australian Sienna. I'm going to pick a little bit up on the tip of my brush. This is a 22 Filbert by Creative Mark. You know, but any acrylic 22 Filbert would work the same. And you know, you guys often just, you know, do it your own way at home, which I love. So I'm not, you know, stressed out or like, oh, you've got to do it exactly my way. You know, my way is just one way up the trail, but it's your trail. It's your painting. It's your journey. It's more important to me that you paint and that you enjoy painting and that you discover that you're creative and that you're talented. Now I'm coming right where this paint is wet into the wet and when you're painting wet on wet in acrylic while it's still flowing, as long as you have enough moisture on your brush and you have enough paint on there and a nice, soft, flexible brush, paint the edges, Ooh. then you can get a very soft, blended edge. Come back and very softly. We talk about pressure a lot at Heart Party with me, and what I'm talking about here is, ooh, your canvas has a sunburn. Ooh, it's been out at the beach, it didn't wear sunscreen, and its skin is so tender, how hard would you paint on that canvas? And that's how you get a nice, soft, feathered blend. That's pretty much it's not, we are all massively talented, but in this particular case, it's not all about talent. It is about pressure. And you gotta keep the pressure out in, in your painting light. All right, I'm gonna come with just pure Australian Sienna now. All right, pick up a little bit with my brush. You saw that there. We like the palette cam because it lets you sort of see that process. You know, as you're working out your own process, let you see that process, that practice of how I pick up paint up oh, with that light. Oh, my poor views canvas with its with its injured, injured. Grab a little bit of white, a little bit of extra paint. You'll notice I've got my new mic because I'm a. I'm a content creator for YouTube now, and uh, moving on up, getting, getting better quality stuff happening here in the studio, making it easier for you and I to hang out together, and I think it's lovely that we get to hang out together. I love to hear from you guys. I have really been enjoying all of the shares. I love the stuff that's been going up on the Facebook page. I love posting it on Pinterest. I love the questions here. You know, I love the likes and comments. It's very encouraging. 
you know, it helps me get myself going when I need to get going. I have a lot going on, mom. You know, you have a lot going on, you understand that. I'm gonna rinse out my brush a little bit. You guys get busy lives. That's why this is so important to do. All right, I'm gonna get into, and this is my magic color. A lot of my paintings have this. This magic combo, I'm gonna get the Southern Ocean Blue. I'm gonna come over to this wonderful Australian Sienna. Love these colors. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white right here right at this edge if you're following me on facebook if you're friended to me or you're following heart party you know that right now i'm doing a daily painting on top of this where i paint a painting every day i'm gonna do that for the next year and i post those up so i'm in the middle of a painting practice just like you guys Going through it just like you guys. Feeling it, dealing with it. Get that soft, soft blend right here. This is this is this is where the money is right here. Just work it wet into wet. The thing that oil painters have that we don't have in acrylics is they've got time. The paint doesn't dry very quickly, and ours does. So we have to move on a little more quickly. We can use mediums that slow the drying time or paints that specialize in not drying like slow paints or gel mediums and you can get those at your art supply store I find it's not that hard just to have a blast and move along have a good time right now I'm gonna get more into my little blue here more blue not gonna pick up any more sienna I'm gonna grab some white Coming up that next inch and blending. This is the base for the stained glass feeling of this tree. This tree is so easy and relaxing to do. You're going to love doing this tree. And here's the trick. I don't want you guys to do this tree just once. Do it in some different colors. Experiment with the colors. So paint it with me like this once and then go back and be like, what would it be like in all reds and golds? Or what would it be like in purples? And have some fun with it. You know, I share this with you to give you a, a jumping board to do what you're doing. I know a lot of you guys are enjoying all the fabulous tutorials on YouTube. I think they're fantastic. You know, I think they're terrific. I'm actually really excited. Paint with Kevin has gone on PBS. And if you haven't watched that, you should. It is in oils, but it's enjoyable. It's very relaxing. He's got a very chill vibe. All right, now I'm gonna start picking up my phthalo. Getting a little of my phthalo and a little of my Southern Ocean Blue. I'll get a little white into that. All right. And I'm gonna come along. Oh God, are these colors just yummy? I love this painting. This painting is yummy colors. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Yummy, yummy, yummy colors. Just moving along. Ooh. <laughs> Isn't this fun? I have a minute to be myself, to be in my own head, to hear my own thoughts. The house is quiet. Beautiful children that I love are out with their dad, which is exciting. Which is wonderful. Love that. Oh, it's so nice. If you have fuzzy children, maybe they're they're napping in a warm, sunny spot. Maybe you've dropped off your needy friends at needy friend daycare. We're all so busy, overwhelmed, and have no time for ourselves. Let's just run, run, run. This time is so special. I love having this time with you. I love it. It's so nice. I love being able to do this on YouTube. It's just a gift. I feel very, very blessed. Hope 
you guys are feeling blessed in your lives. If you're not, hope that you'll give being creative a chance to help you enjoy your world a little bit more. There's so much stuff out there trying to get us to not enjoy our world. The news, blech. social media gets to be a little bit much. You know, so much just trying to disconnect us and make us unsatisfied. And really, there's everything to be satisfied for. Because we're breathing. And there's paint. And there's canvas. And we can. You know, there's painting parties that are going up everywhere. If you haven't gone, go. Go to the painting party. Go. It's really extraordinary. I mean, just get the group on. Get the coupon. Go for full price. Grab your friends. Grab a snack. Painting parties are awesome. They'll get you started. Oh, you know, you can practice here with me and then go in and show them how it's done. All right. Caught there. I'm just going to paint the top here. Finish this off. You know, have a nice little top painting going here. Picked up a little too much blue, but I don't worry about it because my paint's still wet. So watch me there. Blend, 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 blend. It'll still look nice on the wrap. All right. There we go. You get this beautiful blended sky. And it's got this gold at the bottom and it gets deep and wonderful up at the top. That's very much like dawn sky. Um, it's satisfying. It's relaxing. You know, and remember, this is just one layer. You can dry it and do it again. You know, we're not married to anything here. It's not going to go that wrong for us. It's just art. It's just paint. I'm going to rinse out my brush really well. I'm going to take a sip out of Elmer. I love kombucha. Mmm, this is raspberry pomegranate, which is super yummy. Do something that makes all of this. You can't see this here. I got tulips going. I got my adorable stuffies. I got things that make me happy. I got my daughter's little loom bracelets on. Just make yourself happy, man. It's so hard to be happy. You know, you got to make yourself happy. All right, I'm going to take a little bit of this Australian Sienna over to my Thalo. Blue this time. See this over here, and I'm gonna get a very deep green. Very deep green. And I'm gonna paint this little hill back here with this very deep green. Now you're painting along with me, and you're probably thinking, "All right, cinnamon. All right, you Sherpa. I'm with you." I'm hanging in. This tree thing though, I'm starting to get a little nervous. Last time I painted a tree was a while ago. <laughs> so here's a little tip. If the last time you painted a tree was like say, I don't know, in kindergarten, <laughs> guess what? The next time you get a drawing, your brains want to give you that last tree, which is generally a lollipop. Oh yes. So I really want today to be like, if you have managed to avoid the lollipop trap, win! Achievement unlocked. Trees are one of those skills that comes from repetitive exposure, that comes from doing things again and again. And if you are overcoming the need to draw a little fluff, 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 two little lines and make a lollipop, I'm going to do it on a little sketchboard, you are rocking and rolling. You're doing good. You know, you're doing great. And so I really need to say thank you to the people who are sharing again. Oh my goodness. There is a mom that shared with me. She's got three kids, two and under, two of which are small twins. And she painted. That is insanely amazing to me. I'm so impressed. I'm so glad that she took that time to do that. It's 
so glad she took the time to do that. It's super good for her. All right. Got some green here. So I've got a lighter green and a darker green. I've got this beautiful gradated sky. Now I'm ready to talk about my tree. So we're going to come over here. I'm going to move my palette for a second and talk about what's next. If you can't make it to the kid's store, chalk. Chalk. Kids chalk will work. I like to go by and pick up a package of these basic sketching pastels. They're chalk pastels. Um, white is nice because it isn't going to pick up a lot of color into my paint. I can use black today because the tree I'm painting is so dark. And it generally comes with a gold and a red. And this will get you through most paintings. Being able to sketch sometimes just gives you the relaxation and the <sighs> that you need to just be like, it's fine, I'm just going to do this. So let's get the paper out. We're going to talk about trees. Trees are fabulous creatures that do something very interesting. They are ever diminishing. What I mean by ever diminishing is, is that they are thickest at the ground where the roots go in and then each, as they grow up, they get thinner and thinner and thinner and every branch that comes out is thinner than the branch it's attached to and then it gets ever thinner. I mean, you gotta hate a tree for that, but that's what they do, they get ever thinner. Now, yes, I know I've got some global friends that are watching me that are in other countries and I know there are a few trees around the world that break this rule just to give us grief. So if you've got a tree that's got a nice big bulb in the center, does some crazy wonderful thing of other trees melting into tree, awesome. Um, actually share the pictures with me because I think that stuff is amazing. But in, in this purposes, we're going to be kind of talking about the generalized tree form, which is smaller, 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 smaller. How I'll do that, right, when I'm making my tree, and I'm going to draw this here, okay, I've got my little, oh, I've got some land here, and I've got some land here. Maybe I'll use this black chalk so you can really see this. So I've got some little land here, Ooh, and i got some little land here. And I'm going to pick a spot, and I'm going to make a little spot there, right? And I'm going to bow it up, bow it to the right, start bowing to the left, and then back to the right. Now I need a tree that's going to be fairly thick at the bottom, so I'm going to come over and I'm going to decide my thickness, I'll make my mark. And these lines are going to be parallel. They're going to be parallel. Okay, and I'm going to be ever narrowing ever narrowing, ever narrowing. So I have that base trunk. And that base trunk tells me how thick all of my other branches are going to be. And even though this is a decorative tree with a twist, if you understand this principle as your skills grow, as your language goes, you will then be able to understand what you're looking at when you're seeing those beautiful trees outside. And it's my goal that eventually you guys are just out traveling and you hop out of your glam camper, your glamper, and you sit down and you get out your stuff and you just start painting. And you just have a life of art. Because a life of art is a happy life. Now I'm going to come up my trunk and I'm going to make a little branch that comes off the side. And I know it has to be skinnier than that. It has to be skinnier than that. Okay, and I want another little branch coming off of it, and I know that branch needs to be skinnier than that. I'll make one here, and I'll have one go down here, because I'm trying to make that stained glass effect. And I'll come up here, and I'll have a little branch that does this. Mm, actually, I want it to come up here and kind of come up like that. And I need it to be skinnier, 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 skinnier. One off here. Right? So it's just the basic principle. One of the reasons I like this tree for you guys is that in painting parties, when I have taught y'all, the thing that you want to do is shorten your branches. You want to make short, stubby little branches and you don't want to finish them. 
And since these branches all go off the page, if you'll notice I'm breaking up spaces, they're all coming off the page. I'm going to make this branch come down lower here. All right. It's got to be skinnier than my trunk. All right. Skinnier, 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 skinnier. And then it's going to have a nice one that comes up like that. I'm breaking up the space. I'm breaking up the patterns. Uh, if you're watching Cosmos right now, you're loving Neil deGrasse and all the stuff that he's doing. But he talks about how we love our patterns. Well, he's right. He's right. We love our patterns. And we are designed to see pattern. And sometimes in drawing that, kind of bites us in the butt. <laughs> because we want to make a pattern where we don't want a pattern. Maybe have a little branch coming here. See how I'm connecting them up? And a little one coming out here. And your tree might do some different things than my tree does. And but basically, and then that gives us the space that our stained glass will be in. And then roots. Guess what? They're very much like what's happening up here, but they're down here. And so they're going to come down and be like this. And then, well, that's sort of fun. And, I'll make this little curve here, this little U. I like to U where my roots are. That's a little trick that I do. I'll bring some little roots down here because this is how the tree stands. This is the tree's feet. A lot of the feet we can't see, but the part of the feet that we can see is like this. And so that's how you're getting your basic tree. Right there is the magic of the tree. And we're going to just blow some bubbles to celebrate that we got the tree in. <sighs> Have you been blowing bubbles lately? It's that season with the kids. I do things like that. I don't care if you're a high power exec and you run the world every once in a while. Take a minute, do a doodle, blow some bubbles. Have a minute. It will do more for you than anything you can buy in the store. A little bit of silly goes a long way for your soul. We're always talking about heart health. Well, heart health is open that heart up, get all the good stuff in there, sounds silly, and it totally works. So, easier than a bran muffin. I'm saying you shouldn't eat a bran muffin, I'm just saying happy goes a long way. Bran muffin also goes a long way, but it's, it's intense. You know what I'm talking about. You know, you're at this place. If you're a little brush, if you're new, and you don't know about bran muffins yet. You're still living on cupcakes and pixie sticks. To my kids that are painting with me, awesome. I think it is great. You can totally do this. You can completely do this. And guess what? Art is a real career that pays real money and will keep your lights on. You can actually go get a degree in this in college and go make money in it for a living. For real. Oh. All right, back to our world. So, my canvas is dry and I can dry on it for you. Now, I'm going to just, I'm pretty confident in my stuff. So, I'm going to just paint in my tree. Like, one would hope at this point in my life I could just paint in a tree. But you may not be ready to paint in a tree. So, just go, that's fine. Just grab your chalk, that's why it's here, and chalk it in. Don't just paint it in. You're not ready for that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Now I'm going to take a little of my black over to my dog's name purple because I don't want a jet black tree. It will look black to the eye, but there'll be subtle little jemmy tones to it that make a big difference. And I'm going to come here. Here's the center. I'm going to come from where this, these two meet. I'm going to come over like this. I'm going to make a little dot, planted a seed, and made a decision. It's really sometimes just about making decisions. And I'm going to do my little run over here, and run over here, and run over here, and up the canvas. All right, I have made a, made a line. So, decisions have been made, anxiety is over. Now I can just get about the process of painting it. Do your chalk, in my experience, chalk for new artists 
is liberating and, and, and helps and makes it easier. You know, sketching your tree. Think about it. Enjoy the process. I mean, you're painting a tree. When was the last time you did that? Probably lollipops. Parallel line, but it's going to start converging. Ooh, there's some big vocabulary words. Converging and merging. Come up, come up, come up. I'm going to use that bridge. That's where I put my rest my hand on the canvas. I rest my hand on the canvas where it's dry. This only works if it's dry. To steady my line. And I'll just take this off here because it's painting off the canvas. And I will paint that in. Oh, it's just nice to do. I just don't even know how nice it is to do. Just don't even know how nice it is to do. I really like just painting it in. Just painting it in. So relaxing. So relaxing. If you're liking this, just really paint along with me. Just have a blast. Be brave. This is better than a sale. But and you know I say that a lot, like the money doesn't buy happiness, but you can be happiness with you can be happy with money. I'm not anti-money. Money's good. Money's fine. And if you're a very happy person, money is spectacular. But you don't need a lot of money to be happy. You just need to know that you have value and that you're worthy and that you're contributing something to the world. And art gives that. That's that first clue that we're meaningful. That we can create something that adds instead of subtracts. We need that right now. A feeling of adding instead of subtracting. A feeling of contributing. A feeling that we can share the tree that's inside our hearts. That's a special tree. That tree story is about every tree we ever climbed. That's about our parents reading the giving tree to us when we we're small. That tree story is about being at the national park and seeing the redwoods, and being amazed that anything is that old and alive on planet Earth and feeling small and connected at the same time. Trees make us better. So don't be surprised if this tree becomes suddenly very, very, very important to you. It should be. All right. Whoa, up it goes. Whoa, up it goes. Whoa, up it goes. We got that in. You can see it. You can see it. Now, I just have to lay in the rest of my branches. You just have to lay in the rest of your branches. You hear me breathe a lot. It's because breathing helps. I'm going to come up my tree. It's about the halfway mark actually on the canvas. I'm a little bit above the green here. And I'm going to just bow upwards using the bridge, painting on the edge of my brush, painting on the edge of my brush. On the thin edge. I'm going to talk to you about something. I'm painting with this six square. Let me go get my paper for a second. I want to show you something. All right, so I've got my little paint. Practice with your brush. Practice with it. Practice, practice brush strokes, okay? Practice your brush strokes with your brush. So if I paint on the flat, I get this wide stroke. Sure, that's pretty much what I expect. But I've got this edge of the brush. And if I paint on the bottom edge using my finger as a bridge, you can get very fine lines. And the harder I press, the thicker they get. And the lighter I press, the thinner that they get. If you're not used to your tools, practice brush strokes with them. 
see what it's like, see what they do. See all that? Do that. Do it. It's wonderful. It's worth doing. Okay, back to this. So, if you're having trouble getting that thin brush stroke that I'm getting, there's not something fundamentally wrong with you. You just need to practice your brush stroke. You'll be fine. Everybody gets it. Seriously. If they keep trying and they don't give up on themselves and they have faith in who they are, everybody gets it. Beginning that branch. Alright, coming up here. Okay. Taking the time to remember that this is fun. We enjoy it. Let's put one there. Alright, that was a nice branch. So I'm going to come over here to the left hand side and I'm going to make this branch. I'm going to make the branch that comes here. And I'm going to, I'm going to do this. Look, there's a lot of ways to do trees. Right now, besides a daily painting and this fabulous broadcast that I'm doing to bring painting to the people, besides that, I'm also making a game app. I am. I'm making this really hysterical game and there's a link to it on my page and you can go check it out. And we had this fabulous concept artist, uh, Jesse Lab, who's taking my ideas and he's turning them into a whole world. He's an incredible world builder and another really amazing artist, Chuck Carson. And they have beautiful trees. Both of them have gorgeous, exquisite trees. And there in their artwork, if you have the time, if you have a chance to look at what they're doing and go explore them as artists, you're going to see that each of them has a slightly different story that they tell about a tree. Jesse's trees are like those hard cider trees. They're like, I'm a tree and I'm going to grow out of the ground and you're not going to stop me and they're fabulous. And my trees are kind of like this ooh, little Hawaii happy trees. Everybody's got a tree in them. You have a tree in them. Your trees should not look exactly like my trees. Just let that idea go. Okay, this isn't about going with the crowd. This is about going with yourself. This is about learning skill sets. Just go on with yourself. Ooh, it went a little bit for correction that way. All right, that's fine. You know, just trust yourself. Tell the story you need to tell. Tell the story you need to tell. Your story is as valid as my story. You know, Jesse's story is awesome, but it doesn't diminish my story. It enhances it, because we each tell the story. I'm better for it. Not just because my game looks real cool. You know? Chuck's vision of the world just makes the world better. So, I've got that. Get some more of this. I'm going to take a little branch up here. So you're going, oh my god, lady. Games, daily paintings. Yeah. Yeah. You too. Whatever, whoever you are. Wherever you are. They don't know you. You know you. You can be all the things that you want to be. You can do it. You want to be a mom and create games outside of San Francisco? You can do that. There's a way. If you want to stop everything and, you know, be a poet, there is a way to be who you are. You know, if you're in the middle of your life and you just decide to form a band, it doesn't have to be how you pay your mortgage. It could just be that music really enriches who you are. Do that. Find out what it is that makes drawing air worth it for you and commit to it. Paint this tree with me. 
All right, I'm gonna come up here with this branch. I'm gonna come up about an inch. I'm gonna bow up. I'm gonna bow down a little bit and off the page. I'm making sure that, that this branch will be slightly smaller than the branches below it. Because everything gets smaller as the tree grows up. Only human beings were like that. Only human beings were like that. Oh, well, they are in some countries. <laughs> they are in some countries. They get they're very skinny. So much here right now. But you know, it's okay. I don't feel bad about it. Make adjustments where you need to make adjustments. Tell your story how you need to tell your story. I really love, by the way, seeing the views from like all over the world. It just it just trips me out. You know, the people that are that are painting along with me. It's just it's fantastic. It's it's amazing that we're as far away as we are, all over the country, all over the world, literally all over the world, just painting together. Just painting together. I would love if people would tell me like what paint paint brands they're they're using. If you're not in the US, you know, a little thick there. I can thin that when I come put my stained glass in and I'll show you that. You know, I want to know what you're painting with. Is it acrylic? What brand of acrylic is it? You know, um, wherever you are, if the brands I'm talking about aren't the brands that you're using, or if they are, just, just tell me about what your painting experience is like. What is it like to paint where you are? I used to go to a big art show called Art Expo, and uh, they had artists from all over the world, and I really liked talking to the other artists about what their painting experience was, because it just, it was just different than mine, and the stories were amazing, and I, and I love being part of that, so please share with me, what is your painting experience like? Like, what is it for you? Where does the joy here and what like? You know, go ahead and share these. Get the movement going. Get that paint movement going. We need some more art, don't we? We need some more of that. I'm gonna break one down here because I wanna I want another little bit of stained glass here. And I might take one up here. I want the space to break up. And I'll just take that branch here and cross them. Just wherever I cross branches, then I know I've got little different spaces of stained glass that I get to play with. And that's actually the really fun part of the painting. I'm going to bring a little branch up here. Now later I'm going to show you what to do because I've got a couple branches that have over thickened on me. I'm going to show you how to put those branches on a diet and to thin down and to chill out. I'm going to come add some more branches. It's fun to do this. Painting on a number six square from the bright, also referred to as a bright. Because it's just such a cheerful brush. It's so bright. All right. I'm going to put this bigger brush, and then I'll do this little branch here, but I'm going to put this bigger branch up. And come up here. Ooh, yeah, it's so fun to do. I really love doing that. When you get used to this, it just gets to be fun. I would love to see you guys experiment with the colors. And the story that you're telling with your trees. You don't need to paint around the edges if you don't feel like. It's not required. I just like to, just in case I choose not to frame it, because I do a lot of paintings. 
not everything I'm going to show, not everything I'm going to frame. Though I do post a lot of these on Etsy. So that's been kind of nice. And at the end of my daily painting, the end of my daily painting where I do a painting every day, I'm going to have a, sh a show showing the beginning of my journey to the end of my journey. And you're going to see even I just had big changes and big growth because art is about growth. Art is a never-ending story of growth. It's just fantastic. It's never going to let you down. I'm shocked at how supportive people are about art, too. So posting it on your social networks, your friends are going to be like, really? supportive of your journey you'd be like who are these people you're so supportive when i want to date that guy they weren't supportive but now all of a sudden i want to be an artist and they think that's great what the heck? but it's true little branch coming off here you can do it i think i need a little tiny branch crossing here and coming up to make some space there we go. That's a nice, nice little something happening here. And then there's going to be a little branch that's going to come tell a story right here. All right, got a little thick there. <laughs> but again, I'll show you how to thin it down. So just don't worry about the stuff in paint. No, it's not like. Oh, it seems like in gymnastics, if you fall off the beam, they all jump you. But, I mean, you got to fall off the beam, right? you got to have mistakes. It's just not that big of a deal. we got to cut ourselves some slack in the world and just forgive ourselves for not being right all the time. I have to be right all the time. Earnest is good. Right is not necessary. So I'm connecting these little thin branches together, making my little stained glass feeling. This is where my story is going to come from, and then I think I'll be in here. All right, tree, tree, I have put in the tree, tree, and I'll blow some bubbles now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's actually really seriously in here. I don't know if you can see how pretty this is, but it's just really... It's just cool. It's pixie dust. Oh, God, I love it. Ah, drink a little kombucha. You know, this could be coffee. This could be cocoa or tea or water or whatever makes your studio feel special. Whatever you need. You get a little more white. Just because I'm running low. It's not really necessary right now. I'm going to grab it because I saw it. I'm an artist and I sort of do things when it occurs to me to do it. I'm going to add a little more of my Australian Sienna by Matisse Paint. Not a sponsor, by the way. I just, that's what I'm painting with, and uh, I'm going to just be honest with you. Golden is great, Liquitex is great, all the brands are great, they just each have their, their strengths and weaknesses. You just work it out. Now, alright. I'm going to get my <laughs> it has been a week with my kids I'm telling you what I've got a nine-year-old and a four-year-old and now she's a two-year-old and they're all in the middle of like life-changing developmental stages which just means mommy is super worn out and really grateful to daddy for taking the kids out to go play so I can have this time you can have this time. Let's all thank Daddy. Yay! 
And let's also cheer the the people who who don't, you know, who are just doing all the stuff that they do. I'm gonna cheer everybody out there. Kids or no kids, I'm cheering you. Because I know everybody's life is busy. Everybody life everybody's life is intense. Everybody's having a having an experience. Everybody. We could have a little more empathy, couldn't we? Remember everybody's having a time. Alright, so I'm gonna come over here with my roots and let's that's what we'll talk about is being rooted in kindness. That's what we need to be as artists. We need to be rooted in kindness. Get into that mental space. I intend to be rooted in kindness and compassion and remember other people are having experiences. Somebody's honking at me. Somebody's angry at me. I don't need to reciprocate. I can be compassionate. That's a choice. I can choose that. I can choose to paint this root. Give it a nice tapered edge and I can choose to be compassionate. Now I'll tell you what, it's easier to be compassionate if you give a little compassion to yourself. I don't know that everybody does that. There are a lot of people being so critical of themselves. So unforgiving. Their own mistakes, their bodies, their age each other just oh my gosh just let it go put it on the canvas it's where it belongs anyways so I'm gonna come here I'm gonna make my give myself a nice little root here my tree that's rooted in compassion that's what I'm gonna dedicate this tree to it's kindness and compassion Be forgiving of the mistakes in your painting and the mistakes in others. And it will all get easier. It's that expectation that other people should see it the way you see it. It just, it gets me. Oh my god, I get on Facebook and people post stuff that I don't agree with. And I like type it and then I erase it and then I type it and sometimes I put it up and sometimes and I really cheer myself the times that I just I just don't I go back to just posting happy pictures of cats and paintings I love it when I have the strength and wisdom to come from compassion if you're a young person seriously you can let go of the need of other people to see the world the way you see it <laughs> you will save yourself wrinkles and heart attacks and misery you save yourself so much trouble just letting people be who they are let your tree be your tree let your friends be your friends. I feel like this needs a little spot here, so I'm going to put one in there. Let people be. Hard. Hard to love the people I don't agree with. <laughs> but when I do, my week is better. When I just let it go, my week is better. I want you to have a better week. I want us all to have a better week. Uh oh, my bubbles. That's no good. Mm. All sleepy. Needed some more espresso, but I'm gonna do health because I value myself. So I'm making choices. Kind to me. To be kind to me. Kind to myself. All right. So there she is. Our kindness tree. Our loving tree. 
This can reflect that part of ourselves, that just deep spiritual compassion and kindness that could we you could use globally. Think nice thoughts about our friends all around the world and wish people we don't know blessings and well-being. <sighs> yeah, I like that. So, the fun part. The fun part. Yeah, I love the fun part. Find yeah, maybe this. This is a number ten bright. But these are just varying squares and smaller sizes. You could do any little package of brushes. I'm gonna start doing my stained glass effect, which is a lot of fun. So I'm gonna get my brush wet. I'm gonna grab a little bit of white. I'm gonna grab a little bit of blue, just straight blue. Mm, that's a little bit too blue. I'm gonna add a little purple to it. I need a little darker. A little darker. I'm gonna pick a spot up here. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna paint in this spot with my blue. Now here is where if I feel like I got a branch a little too thick, I can just I can just fix that right now. I'm gonna paint some of that right there. Pull it out. Do my top because I feel like it. Maybe here. Grab a little more blue. I go a little bit deeper. Paint in this space. Now, chest. So when you want to control how your paint flows, I might actually switch to a smaller brush. Back to that pressure. Lighten it up. So I might switch to this smaller brush again. Now I'm going to add a little bit of this blue to my purple. And a little white to that. I'm going to get this incredible color. It's a little bit of purple, a little bit of blue. Deep indigo feeling. And this is about just taking the space and taking each of these little spaces and filling them in. It's really enjoyable. I'm going to come over here and pick another space. I try to not put the same color next to each other or vary it up in some way. It's like a game. And I'm going to keep these dark blue colors in the upper branches. And that's where they're going to go. And keep them up here. Some of this just straight blue. Keep these in the upper branches. Because that's where the cool sky is. Now I'm going to come here and get some of my Australian. I haven't rinsed my brush, by the way. I'm going to get a little bit of white. Paint this right here. Get a little bit of white. Just paint this in. I love this part. So much fun to do. that. That's what we're doing. We just grab different colors and I'm 
mix that, my Australian sand over this mixture here. Grab some light. Some right here. No, I want something darker. And that, you know, if you're if you're there, I'm just gonna get pure pigment and I'm just gonna darken it up. I want the top to be darker. And then make decisions as you're painting. Back yourself. And grab these little bits of color, put them in the stained glass. You want to paint out a branch right now. This is the time because when your coat paint is dry, you can paint over it with a more opaque color. Opacity is the amount of pigment in the paint. It's ability to color. So like yellow doesn't have like a lot of that. Or believe it or not, white and black have a lot. And so these different colors have more opacity, and you'll notice that by how well they cover the canvas underneath. And I'm gonna take a little bit of my Australian Santa, I'm gonna come over to my blue. Taking my Australian Santa, coming over to my blue. I'm getting these dark colors right here. I'm gonna start adding some of these dark colors. A little bit of white in that. It's a slightly different tone. Enjoy that. This is what gives it that stained glass feel. Take the heel of my brush there. I don't know if you're seeing that, it's fun. There we go. Get that going. It's really dark color and I'm going to enjoy that. In there. Now let's just see what these are. Uh, how you mix them, have fun mixing them, learn how they mix together. This is one of those great places that a little experimentation is wonderful, a little playfulness is wonderful. You can see what I'm doing on the palette cam, which is why we have that. It's just not a mystery how I'm making these decisions. So now that's starting to gem up and fill up in there and get gemmy and pretty and really exciting and I like it. Australian Santa, come over here and mix in here. Bright it up a little bit. Get some of these greens going in here. As we're coming down the tree, we're going to start mixing more of the greens. You see more of that afoot, that's very more in the gold, and you'll make decisions. You'll be like, no, I need that more gold. Add some more gold to it.
uh, canvas that's underneath will show through, which is why we bothered to paint that in. It will affect the tone and feeling of everything. Give this painting a more complete painting feel, which is nice. Like get some darker green and shoot that in there. And Pick up some of my blue and work that in there. Just enjoy the process of filling it all in. You know, just enjoying the process of filling it all in. Fill ourselves in. Fill this in. Fill it in, fill it in, tell the story, fill it in. So I'm over here in, this, in the Australian and Southern blue. Add a little bit of white. Pick up a little bit of this blue, which will be nice, and pick up with the white. And get more of a turquoise tealy color. It's fun to do. Fun to do. <sighs> so relaxing. We are actually, the reason I get a little fruity when I'm teaching, the reason you might feel a little bit different is that we're in a meditative state when we paint. When we get really right brained, we are doing some cool stuff. I just got some white in that Southern Ocean Blue. I'm going to mix some of that here. I'm not rinsing my brush. I'm sort of allowing these things to keep happening. However, if you're painting and you're finding that your brush is just getting away from you, go ahead and add some highlight here. Mix it, man. Enjoy. Stressed. Just do your thing. Just do your thing. Do your thing. I picked up some just straight yellow. I need a little more white on that, so I'm grab some. Just put that there. So tree is filling in. The feelings of our tree are filling in. Think about our trees filling in. Just painting in these little spots. You can paint these in with great precision. You can be very relaxed and painterly about it. Isn't really for this project a right or wrong answer other than not taking the time to do it. It's the only wrong answer. Just don't give yourself the time to find out how amazing and creative you are. That is crazy kids. Everything else, it's all good. I'm going to go get some more of my this wonderful color that I love so much, my Australian Sienna over here. I've noticed a lot of my paintings are very Sienna based. I love me some Siennas. So I hope that you'll take the time to like us on Facebook and follow us on Pinterest and contact me, share your stories, share your artwork. It doesn't even have to just be mine. I love seeing what you're doing. I love all the content creators on YouTube. So it's all good. We're very nice. We're very supportive. All right. Our stained glassy tree. Woo! That's fabulous, right? I'm running out of bubbles. There we go. Stained glassy tree. <sighs> the drips and the highlights. That's what we have left. 
You can do that. You can handle that. So the first thing we're gonna do, rinse out our brush. Rinse, 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 rinse. And I'm gonna take my Australian Sienna, and a little bit of Southern Ocean. I'm gonna make a very, kind of, it'll look like an olive here, but when I add white to it, it'll highlight. I'm gonna come here, and I'm gonna dust. Oh, this is down to the lightest tip of my brush. This is how you do these type of highlights. Lightest tip of your brush, Imagine that sunburn on your canvas, or if you've never had a sunburn, because I realize there are some people who have been blessed enough to never have experienced a sunburn. Imagine a wet, angry cat is also good. I'm going to come right along this hill line, give it a highlight, and highlight between my roots. Come up here and highlight it. This is where the sun picks up, pick up some more white. This is where the sun is kissing this hill. Look at that. We're just picking up some of that. So we've got that. That's lovely. Now we get to do the drips. The drips are really fun. The drips are a little bit scary because this is where you're not in an obvious type of control. You are in control because you're making decisions. You're deciding to do the drips and you're deciding to mix the paint and you're deciding to trust that you don't have to have your hand on every little thing for it to be okay. And you're, you're accepting that beauty and perfection and all of that are sometimes about letting go. Sometimes. I, I realize perfectionists are not always like, no, no, it's never about letting go. Love you guys. Bless you guys. It's totally okay. You got to do things your way. But just come with me a little bit on this one. So the trip to the drips is now you could use a pouring medium. I'm going to just use water. And I'm going to start over here. And I'm going to come and I get my water and I'm going to get my purple. And I'm going to mix water into my purple. If you can see me doing that there on the palette cam, I'm dipping and mixing. And I get a very thin very thin mixture. And then I'm going to pick up my round number eight. Something close to this. Number close to this will work. I'm going to load it up, load it up, load it up with paint, load it up. I'm going to come over here, come around, and I'm going to get water and dip, and then I've got a drip. Now I can control a dip a little bit if I very lightly take the tip of my brush and pull it. Little trick people don't know about dripping, but it works. I'm gonna come grab some blue. I'm gonna get some blue. I'm gonna do the same thing with the water. Some purple, because I want some gradation. Load up my brush. And I can also encourage a drip by pulling the brush. And I've got some water on my brush. I'm gonna ask it just to go here. I know. It's dripping out. I can sit there and say no. No. I can even come in and get another little color and encourage that other little color to be part of this journey. I've taken some white and a little bit of blue and I'm pulling it down here. See that? Ooh. I'm going to get some blue. I've got some white on my brush, so my, my blue is getting lighter. I even pick up some blue. And I roll and I pick it up on my tip. I try to pick up some of this wet, wet paint. I'm coming along here, get some water. Encourage another little drip. It's starting to happen. Encouraging another little drip. I'm going to get some white. Dabbing it in there. This is very fun to do. You may want to experiment on a practice canvas, on a practice piece of paper, till you feel real confident with your drips. 
Now, here's a tip. How to stop my drip. Lay it flat, dry it with a hair dryer, start over. This illusion that you're not in control is all it is. It's an illusion. I'm going to come add to some of my Australian Sienna, get lots of water, get lots of water, pick up this paint, come along with that, back into the blue, coming along here. Pulling my brush, start a drip. Start a little drip, start a little drip. Come back with some water. So I'll let the other paint kind of contaminate in here. Want it to run a little bit longer, so I'm going to pull some water from just my cup and dab it in there. Dab, dab, dabbing. And pulling. That's all I'm doing. Grab some just hold here. Might need to pull out some just sienna for this mixture process. may need to get fresh water. The drips are fun. So remember, how do I stop a drip? Lay it flat, dry it with a hair dryer. I'm mixing, mixing, mixing. This isn't particularly economical to your paint, it's just fun. Pulled down the areas, I've got some water. Rolling my canvas out, rolling my brush out. Some water, rolling my brush out. Pull it down. Fun stuff. Some purple here. Along the bottom of the tree. Oh, that purple picked up into that. Just enjoying, just enjoy it. Really seriously, once you get drips down, you want to drip everything for a while. You want to do all those little drippy eyes that you see on YouTube. You'll be like, oh, I can drip all those eyes now. Oh my God, I can do drippy eyes. Yes, you can. Okay. You can totally do a drippy eye. I'm going to bring this down the tree. Alright, so we've got this side of the drips. I'm going to come up this side and work my drips this side. Definitely want a drip to start happening here, so I'm going to pull up my paint. So I'm doing it. I roll the tip of my brush, which pulls the extra moisture and paint off. I encourage the drip to start. Some water. Load the drip. So 
from here. Rolling my brush. Love that drip. Getting a very light purple to load into this drip. Pulling it down. I'll drip some highlights in life. You can join a drip. You know, just, just come along and work it. My Australian blue, my Southern Ocean. Come on here. Put my paint. Oh, got my blot, watch for blobs. You get to having so much fun that you kind of mess yourself up. So here that's got potential, so I'm going to pull that. Some white in there to get some lightness. Start loading that drip. Oh, there it goes. Loading that drip. I see one forming there, thinking about it. Encourage it. Take that all the way off the edge and then come pick up this yellow. Pull it through here. aggressive with that one. It's okay. Drip a tree! Woo! Ah! We did drip a tree! Drippy tree! Celebratory bubbles. What's left of celebratory bubbles? <laughs> Fantastic! So, tree be a little compassionate be a little bit kind especially to yourself seriously all week cut yourself some slack paint some trees click comment subscribe go to Pinterest go to Facebook go to Twitter find us comment share I actually care tell me what you're painting with what are your mediums where do you live what's going on how old are you? What's it like for you to be an artist? And how is it impacting you? Keep posting, keep painting with me. Um, I really hope to see you at the Cecil soon. This one right here. Goodbye.